Friends, development is about taking 10 steps forward and 9 back. Then again, 10 steps forward, and this time, with luck, perhaps only 8 steps back. Whatever the speed, development is never a risk-free affair. Much the contrary, risk is the oxygen of development. When it comes to the finance of development, the commercial banks are the most important actors, and we wish to express our conviction that through the imposition of banking regulations that are completely biased towards the reduction of the risk that the banks themselves could fail, we are severely curtailing the capacity of those same banks to assist the society in its own development. We are not predicating that risks should be ignored, but only that they should not be additionally handicapped by weights that are arbitrarily set by the bank regulators by means of the current methods of calculating the minimum capital requirements for the banks. A bank should be able to return the savings when asked, help to promote growth and distribute the opportunities in society. Unfortunately, the last two decades, all the discussions have been centered exclusively on the first goal, namely on how to turn banks effectively into safe mattresses. We therefore urge all the development agents in the world to unite and reintroduce themselves into a very vital debate from which they have been excluded. And so that if the bank regulators of the world insist on imposing only the criteria of their financial commissars, the credit rating agencies, we respond by requesting an equal presence for the development rating agencies and the distribution of opportunity rating agencies. We need a development per unit of risk formula. The current circumstances that evidences that all the risk adverseness displayed by the bank regulators might anyhow have come to naught should not be taken as a call to increase the sophistication of the regulations, like through Basel II, which can only lead to increased opacity, but to reignite the whole debate about how best the banks could serve society, since the development of the financial sector should, should mean more than the development of the agents of the financial sector. Also, we need to realize that any man-made distortion in the market carries, in accordance to Gresham's law, the risk of amplifying the risks. If a credit is perceived by the market to be less risky than what the regulators consider to be, then it will be taken out from the balance sheet of the bank, while if they are judged as more risky, they will be added to the assets of the bank, so as to gain the protection from the lender of last resort usually the same regulator. It is very sad when a developed nation decides making risk adverseness the primary goal of the banking system and places itself voluntarily on a downward slope, since risk-taking is an integral part of its vitality. But it is a real tragedy when developing countries copycat that and falls into the trap of calling it quits. No society can survive as viable by maximizing risk avoidance. And therefore, more than trusting the bank's own financial standings, we need to be able to better trust what they do for us. Let us make certain our bank regulations helps us to do that. Since quite frequently, the cost derived from mismanaging a bank crisis exceeds the cost directly attributable to the crisis, we suggest that the bank supervisors instead dedicate more efforts to develop best practices for resolution mechanisms that can shorten the length of any crisis and so that growth and development can resume as fast as possible. We also urge much more research on the issue of banks and regulatory arbitrated risk adverseness. For instance, could the paradox of the increasing net outward financial flows from developing to developed countries be in any way related to the current bank regulations? Are they inducing the banks to finance more the public sector and the consumer than the entrepreneurs? There is also the need of more awareness of the possible consequences of empowering too much the credit rating agencies and the bank supervisors. Finally, we wish to make absolutely clear that the purpose of this statement is not in any sense to belittle the value of all the Basel Committee's bank regulation standards, but it is to plea for a better balanced debate 
and consideration of the different societal objectives of the banks. Thank you.